Today's episode and our awesome bit of robot accomplishment is made possible entirely through the support of Jack Singer and dozens of other people just like you on Patreon. Check out the link below in the description and see how you can get involved. Thank you. Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome back to the shop. It's time for episode 13 of Project Archie and today, finally, we get to experience the glory, the majesty that is the J2 arm. We've had a robot coming together for a while now and finally it starts to get an arm. Finally it's something, a big wibbly bit that moves. So I'm pretty jazzed about this. So let's get right into it. This is what you need to know. The big thing is you lay the arm down on the table like this and you really wanna pay attention way up here, this area, okay? So you've got these two outer holes that I think are for mounting the cover on it, but there's two inner holes and the orientation is like that. The manual on this is a little confusing because he draws a circle around it saying, you know, these are the holes, but he hides that hole. So it's, it's a little, it's a little confusing. You'll see it in the manual. You'll see what I'm talking about. But if you look closely, you'll notice that it's that hole that's covered. So that one and that one are at different elevations. So those are the two that go on the right. And the reason they go there is for a limit switch that I'm guessing is going to mount like this. Because that would make it want to actuate around that circle. I could be wrong. Switch might go like that, but it'll look really screwed if it does. So, we've got our arm oriented in the right direction, and now we're gonna focus way down here. We're gonna be working on this. This is the J2 joint, and I keep all my stuff bagged up. When I first got all my kits, I sorted everything out so that I knew what's what. So you're gonna need eight M4 by 10 countersunk flathead screws. They look like this. And remember when you're measuring these screws, you measure the entire length. So the whole length is gonna be about a centimeter, okay? And then they're, they're M4s, so it'll be about four millimeters thick. You're also gonna have your uh, other screw, your grub screw for later, but we'll get to that. But this is a good time to dig that out. So it all begins. This is gonna drop down through here, like that. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure your keyway is pointed in the long axis of the arm. So the keyway goes up. You can see there's a little keyway in there. So we begin by putting all those bolts in. So since these are a four millimeter metric bolt, you're going to need a two and a half millimeter tool to put them in. And I'm not even going to try and do that on the bench under the camera. I'm just going to do that right here. Now we've talked about bolt technique before, boltment technique. That's a word you never really get to use enough, boltment. So when you put these in, just get them run down and like half a turn loose until you get them all in. Do not put them in one at a time and then tighten them all the way down because this is going to settle into position when you get down there. Okay, once you've got them all in, then snug them down tight. Don't go nuts. This is totally a thing you can do with just a, a screwdriver style tool. They don't need to be reefed in there because you're doing this into aluminum. And if you do it like with a, like a 3 8 socket wrench or something, it'll be really easy. Even if you're a tiny dude like me, I'm not like, you know, He-Man. Um, but it'll be really easy with like a 3 8 inch wrench to strip these out, like a 3 8 inch socket wrench. So hand tools like this are way better. And we're gonna come back in a future episode after the whole thing's all sorted and we're gonna Loctite all these with just a, a blue Loctite. But at this stage, I'm just getting them all in hand tight because that's fine. So that's what you should end up with. It should look 
like this. And as you come down the arm, you'll see our two holes for the limit switch mount go right there. Okay? So, facing down, limit switch mount. We got an arm. We got an arm. I'm excited. All right, so for the next step, we're going to grab one of our 30206 bearings. We're going to flip it over so it cones up. And we're just going to drop that right on there, and it should perfectly fit. Boom! Like a glove. All right, remember that tiny little set screw we were talking about a minute ago, that little grub screw? This is an M3 by 10 set screw and it goes into the J12 spindle. Now, you gotta put this in, but don't thread it through to the keyway yet. So this is the keyway down here. So you're gonna, I'll spin this around so you can get a good look at it. Okay, so there's a little hole right here pointing out, it's, it's right in line with the keyway. And you wanna run this in there, but just get it started. We're not, we're not going in for serious yet, so just, just get it started. And, you can't see it on this shot, but you want to be able to look in here and make sure that's not poking all the way through. But just get it in there. You'll want it later. Okay, it should look like that when you're done. Now, as you remember from before, we have the races, the, the outer ring of the bearings, already in here. And you can see I've got the outer ring of the bearing already in here. With that in place on both sides, we can bring our arm in. I've waited so long to do this. We can bring our arm in, and that just drops right into position, and our bearing here will just seat right into its race inside. And then we can take the other bearing. This is another 30206 bearing, and that'll go in from this side and they should face each other and they both drop into their races and now instantly everything is just nice and snug and good and right where it's supposed to be and you can you can see them all move how cool is that so it'll still fall apart if you let go of it but we're on the path just like we did with the big j1 turret spindle this is the same idea so we get into our next bag here and this is our J2 tension ring. And we've got four screws for the tensioning, the grub screws. And we have six M3 by 10 flathead screws. And we're gonna install those all in there. Now you'll notice there's a keyway on here and that keyway has to line up to the keyway here. So we're gonna put this on like that and then bolt everything together. So these go together with a two millimeter Allen wrench. and we've made sure to align our spindle. And now everything will hold together. So you can, you can move this around any which way you want. Be careful spinning this around too fast because you'll, you'll mess things up. You've got, remember, you've got a little generator on the back there at the moment, but it moves, it grooves, it's a robot. This is so cool. So your next step is you'll have these four grub screws. These are little M4 by five millimeter set screws. Put those in and run them in till they just kiss the side of the bearing. What these do is a, a, apply a preload tension to the bearing. And if they're too tight, it won't move. If they're too loose, you'll have slop in the system. So this, this should, if this, just, if this doesn't just fall on its own, then you've got them, they're too tight but it should be totally easy to move, nice and smooth. Man, that's cool. That's gonna be big. That's gonna be huge. I like it. So this whole arm's gonna end up being like this long. It's, I'm excited. I like this. I like it a lot. We have built, 
an arm, we have a thing, it can rise up and the machines will kill us all. We're getting there. And with that, we conclude episode 13 in our tutorial series and we've emptied two more of the little baggies on the project. So thank you guys for hanging out and being a part of this. Oh, it's heavier now. Look at that. That is so cool. We got, we got a thing and it moves and there's a keyway and this is awesome. I'm digging it. We'll be back soon for episode 14. You guys have fun. And as always, I'll see you next time.